Well, folks, the election took place yesterday, and we still, at the time that I record this video, do not know which party will control the House and which party will control the Senate. But let me just preface this conversation by saying I'm feeling pretty good. I braced for the worst, hoped for the best, and it turned out that the red wave was more of a red trickle. So it did not go the way that a lot of Republicans planned. And there's some key preliminary takeaways that I think are really important. Now, we don't have all of the details about this election, so I'm kind of working with incomplete information, but there are evident things that are really important. But before we get to my five key takeaways, let's get to some results that stand out. First and foremost is John Fetterman defeated Mehmet Oz, and Mehmet Oz has called him to concede. This is very important because before Donald Trump can claim that there was fraud, Oz already conceded. This is very good news. And it's also really encouraging to see that voters in Pennsylvania did not fall for a fraud like Dr. Oz, and they didn't use John Fetterman's stroke against him. If you watched my coverage of that debate between John Fetterman and Dr. Oz, I was very, very disappointed because I felt like voters would not see through the dynamic here. You have somebody who isn't necessarily suffering from cognitive issues. It's just an auditory processing problem. I expected voters to use that against John Fetterman, but... He won, and now we have a very progressive senator going to the Senate. Uh, it's just, it's really encouraging to see. Now, some other key races that I want to touch on here. Election denier Doug Mastriano lost the governor's race in Pennsylvania to Josh Shapiro. Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker will be heading to the runoff. It's official, so we won't know the outcome of that race until, I believe, January. J.D. Vance has defeated Tim Ryan. Tudor Dixon lost the Michigan governor's race to Gretchen Whitmer. Tim Michaels, the Wisconsin GOP candidate for governor, who recently said that Republicans will never lose another election again if he wins, lost to Democrat Tony Evers. And at the time that I record this video, the race between Katie Hobbs and the dangerous election denier Carrie Lake for Arizona governor is still too close to call. Progressive Summer Lee won her election and she will be headed to Congress to represent Pennsylvania's 12th congressional district. District. Mandela Barnes unfortunately lost to Ron Johnson, albeit very narrowly. Sean Patrick Maloney, the chair of the DCCC, ended up losing his race for Democrats, which is embarrassing. And this is after he ran in Mondaire Jones' district, effectively pushing him out. And so that blew up in his face. Very embarrassing for him. Now, Oregon Live has called the state's governor race for Tina Kotek, who was in danger of losing to Republican Christine Drazen due to the presence of a billionaire funded spoiler in the race betsy johnson it's still very close it looks like it's headed in tina kotek's favor which is good for me as an oregon resident i was worried about this and bo hines the republican congressional candidate who recently proposed rape panels as a way of determining whether or not a woman should qualify for an abortion lost his race that was basically madison cawthorn's mini me and he went down so those are just some results from some key races. Again, we don't know all that there is to know yet. Also really important, I have a video coming out about this. Uh, Lauren Boebert is currently trailing, so it turns out that the polls weren't that far off with regard to Colorado's third congressional district, but more on that later. So first of all, what are my five key takeaways? Things that are just evidently clear from the night. First and foremost... I already kind of alluded to this. The red wave turned out to be a red trickle. Although there's a caveat, we still don't know the results from all of these races. Many counties are still counting, but certainly Republicans did not do as well as they anticipated. Second of all, um, the next takeaway is that the polls, once again, were pretty off, at least at this point in time. And I think this is largely due to younger voters being un underrepresented. Now, usually what pollers do is they will base what the race is going to look like on uh, who's a likely voter. So if you're a voter who voted in the last two elections, then they'll probably say that you're a likely voter. I I'm not necessarily sure what the criteria uh, criteria is. The methodology will, will vary. Um, but the polls have been inaccurate. So going forward, I want people to keep that in mind and not base whether or not they think a race is going to go a certain way entirely on polls. And I'm kind of reminding myself this as well, 
because I tend to uh, look at the polls and view them as more than a gauge on voters and just kind of like look at that as where the election is going. Not always the case. Sometimes they hold, some, sometimes they don't. But polls are not people and real people voting is what is going to make the difference at the end of the day. So this is something that we should account for with our uh, political analyses going forward. Now, my third takeaway is that abortion is a huge winner. Not only did it drive turnout, but voters in Kentucky rejected an amendment to their state constitution stating that there was no right to an abortion or required funding for abortions. Vermont overwhelmingly approved a proposal that creates a constitutional right to reproductive autonomy. Michigan essentially did the same, as did the state of California, and a proposed law in Montana to grant personhood to fetuses at any gestational stage essentially criminalizing abortion, is currently losing, although not all of the votes have been counted yet, and it is still relatively close. But where abortion was on the ballot across the country, it won, at least at this time. We don't know for sure if Montana is going to go the way that it's going to go, but it looks really good. So abortion is a huge, huge issue. And in some states like Pennsylvania, I believe, that was the number one issue for voters. So Republicans certainly overestimated their confidence there. They thought that the anger for Roe had kind of dissipated, but no, people are still very pissed off that women lost the right to bodily autonomy in this country in many states. So that's key. Now, another takeaway, my fourth takeaway, is that Gen Z absolutely delivered. And going forward, Democrats have got to do more to appeal to younger voters. Alex Clark of The Telegraph called this election a youth quake with Gen Z essentially holding off a Republican wave by turning out in larger numbers. Now, younger voters were motivated by issues like abortion, but also student debt cancellation. And even political hacks like David Frum were forced to admit that this was a winning issue after all, tweeting, I thought student debt relief was bad policy and bad politics. I still think it's bad policy, but looking at the youth vote surge, hard to deny its political impact, you think? And if it helped save the country from Trumpism, the positives more than pay for the negatives. I know, shocker, right? Who would think that younger voters would turn out if you have policies that specifically benefit them for once. Now, another thing correlated with student debt relief is that the uh, candidates who publicly distanced themselves from Biden's student debt policy, well, they didn't do too hot. For example, Tim Ryan publicly came out against Biden's student debt plan and he lost to J.D. Vance. Catherine Cortez Masto also publicly opposed Biden's student debt plan. And though the election has not yet been called at the time that I record this video, she is currently losing to Republican Adam Luxalt by three points. Now, I just want to stress that correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation, but it's very clear that these popular policies that the Democrats stand for, reproductive freedom, student debt relief, these are popular motivators. So Democrats have got to get this through their skulls. Do popular things. Embrace the youth. Do what they want and they will reward you at the ballot box. It's that simple. Democrats also stop running away from popular things. How could you not anticipate that student debt relief would be popular? That's what all the polls showed. And individuals like Tim Ryan and Catherine Cortez Masto ran away from that. And that may have cost him. At least it cost him with the youth vote. Now, the final takeaway that I want to leave you with here, my fifth takeaway, is that even if a lot of election deniers went down, many of them, we're talking hundreds, were successful last night, as Common Dreams reports, 210 election deniers to be exact, they won their races. So across the country, at all levels of governments, election deniers will be assuming power. That is something that is very, very discouraging, we'll say, because even if this election did not go the way that Republicans intended, the fact that election deniers now are in roles of power is something that we have to grapple with as a country. We have to find ways to respond to their lies. But I don't want to be too doomer because overall I'm feeling pretty good about the results. And it seems like the Republicans kind of overplayed their hand, going all in on the culture war and attacking trans people, uh, banning books, trying to ban abortion, control women, deny the election results. It seems like that didn't necessarily pan out too well for them. 
So I hope that they get the message. Odds are they probably will not get that message and they won't adapt. Either way, this was a better night for Democrats than a lot of people suspected, myself included. And you love to see it. To see Republicans currently coping at the results, uh, that just warms my heart. You know You know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.